Welcome to season four of the Courage Within podcast with your host, Libier. I am so grateful to be back. I feel so energized and ready and I really feel like the Lord has taught me a lot of lessons this summer that I think I can share with you that hopefully will impart goodness in your life and it will make your life better. Today's episode, we're going to be diving into the topic of how to get God's strength when you're feeling very weak or very low. I know for me, I'm going through a really tough season. It's a really interesting season because I've been in hard seasons my entire life. I think we all inevitably go through difficult things, right? We go through challenges, we go through loss, we go through grief, we go through so many things that um, hurt our heart and our soul and our mind. And I believe that without a shadow of a doubt, the name of life and the name of the game in life is it's an all a mind game. It's all a mental test of will you think better thoughts than you did yesterday? Will you believe God at his word when things seem to be crumbling down? Will you have faith that God will restore and renew your strength when you feel weak? And I know for me, there have been times in life when I've been so incredibly low that, oh, I just... I have felt like it's the end of an era, it's the end of, it feels like the end of life in a way. Um, There are certain things that bring us to our knees and we are feeling just so depleted from energy, from any kind of faith, from knowing how to pray for ourselves or for others. I know for me, I've been through some challenges in my life where you just feel like you're never going to be different or it's never going to get better. And if you are there or you have been there or you're entering into maybe a new season of difficulty, I pray that this podcast enables you to understand how powerful it is to be weak with Jesus because this is a place where Jesus can come and deliver himself to you in a way that you have never thought before. Maybe this in your weakness, you are learning the power and the strength of Jesus. And if I look at it in that way, if I look at my suffering and the things that I go through, the trials and the tribulations and the things that shake me to my core, if I look at them with the scope and the perspective of, hey, this is actually enabling me to meet Jesus in a different way than I could have in any other season in life, right? When we go through life and it's just easy, it kind of feels like we are operating out of our own strength, right? It's when we get the bad news, when we get that bad diagnosis, when we lose the spouse or the child or, or the friend, or when we feel betrayed or are betrayed, or when we go through trauma after trauma, after loss, after loss, after disappointment, we start to feel like Rocky. You know, when, <laughs> I don't know if you watched Rocky, but it's a movie about perseverance and the gentleman that fights in that fight, in that ring, he gets up. He gets up when he gets knocked down. And that is the strength that we all crave and want. But let me tell you something. I don't believe that strength is found without Christ. Because Christ enables us to find the strength that we need when we need it. When we feel like we aren't even able to ask for it. Um, There are so many things that I believe that God is giving us as a treasure in hard times that would never have come things that maybe he's doing in us like a work of healing a work of changing our character so that we can withstand something else that we're going to cross in the future or maybe just to build empathy and compassion in our souls and hearts for other people and their pain because I know for me when I've met people that have held space for my pain it's been one of the most beautiful things God has ever allowed me to experience is when someone else is careful enough with my heart to just sit and listen to me and just give me space to be hurt oh those moments have been so healing to me that person doesn't need to say anything to fix me that person doesn't even need to give me any advice their presence and the fact that they're holding space for the pain and the hurt 
is just ministry enough. The ability to talk with a friend that cares about our hurts is so important. And I know for some of us, we don't feel like there's a friend that is for us in that way. And I want to tell you, Jesus can be that for you. Jesus has been my friend through so many difficulties in my life. Jesus has become my best friend because I have enacted in this relationship with abiding with him every single day and doing something little like journaling or praying to him or getting on my hands and knees and saying lord i can't but you can i don't know how to even pray for myself so you jesus pray for me teach me how to pray for myself teach me how to follow you even though i hurt even though my my flesh is feels like it's falling away give me your strength and i want to point you to this scripture that has been so helpful to me in this time of difficulty and grief it's out of second corinthians 12 verses 9 through 12 and it says but he said and this is jesus speaking my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness and then paul goes on to say Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. And I want to be like Paul. I want to I want to say, Lord, be with me, especially in my weakness. Be with me when I feel so frail and I don't understand or I can't comprehend why you're doing what you're doing. But Lord, I am here surrendering to this pain, surrendering to this moment, surrendering to the hurt and the feelings of maybe powerlessness or division or anger or resentment that I feel. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would give me the anointing to operate on a different level than my flesh would, right? Because we have a choice. When things come our way, we have a choice. We have something called responsibility. We have the responsibility to either act in our flesh or act out of God's Spirit. And can you guess which one will be more fruitful for your life? Operating on the strength that you just have is going to lead to depression, anxiety. You know, you might encounter panic attacks. You might feel, you know, and I'm not saying that if you have panic attacks or feel anxious or depressed that you haven't gone to the Lord. Like I, we're all humans. We all have human emotions and PTSD, panic attacks, anxiety, depression, they're all part of the human journey. They're all part of us. So don't think that you're wrong for having these things, right? I used to struggle so badly with PTSD until I learned that when I turned into the panic, when I looked at the panic in the face and showed panic my savior the panic understood that i was there to learn something instead of running away from my panic attacks i started running toward them toward them with the heart of jesus right toward them with jesus's hand held in my right hand saying lord i can't stop this feeling of panic but you can come with me and we can ride the wave together God has shown me that avoiding my feelings, my really crazy feelings is a catastrophe because not only do I belittle what I'm experiencing or the experience of what has happened to me, but I also lose sight of what I can learn when I face the pain. I learn so much more when I face my own pain, my own wounds, the things that have happened to me in my past, the things that are happening to me now that are stressful and hard and difficult. When I give myself the opportunity to sit down with God and totally be in communion with him and ask him to abide in my heart and in my and in my hurt, he gives of himself to me in a way that I have never experienced before. And he becomes way more real to me than just going along pretending that everything's okay when I give myself time to sit at the feet of Jesus and fall apart on my worst day I get to see God on his best day because he's lifting me up and I think God delights so much in his children coming to him for comfort 
I am a mom of two girls and when they come to me and they need comfort, you know, they're growing up. So they're, they're teenagers now. And sometimes it seems like they don't need me. Right. But there are certain moments that bring them down so much that they come to me as if they were little kids. Think of that. If you're not a parent, think of that way of like, if you become humbled yourself as a little child and you go to Jesus and you ask him to help you with your hurt and your heart and your weakness, he is going to want to pick you up like a little chick, right? Pick you up in his big, powerful hands. Whether you're a man or a woman, God's strength is going to hold you up. Because I believe nowadays, even with men and women right now as well, they want to be so strong. They want to feel like, you know, they're the boss. They're doing the thing, right? And we do want to feel empowered to be ourselves, right? I think there's good in that. But at the same time, when we think we've got it and we don't need any help, that's when Satan comes and he just can destroy the the confidence that we once had there's always a test that happens in in life right we're always being tested and when we go through these really hard situations and things that bring us to our knees we're often so quick to say why me god doesn't love me i must have done something wrong or we miss out and we deflect our, our feelings. We don't know how to sit in those hurt feelings and we go and we distract ourselves. And hey, let me tell you something. I am the queen of distraction. I often want to distract myself from the pain. I was an addict. I was an addict to alcohol. I, I was bound to so many things that I just went to so quickly when things got hard. And some things I still struggle with because I'm a human being and there's never going to be a time where I'm perfect w until I go to heaven, right? However, there are moments in my life where I now feel so grateful to know and be aware of like, Libier, you need to go and sit and have a chat with Jesus. You need to go and journal and get all of those feelings out so that you can know that you're being heard and that Jesus can hear you and not just hear you, but minister to you, come to your counsel, come to your, come to your aid and give you a beautiful picture of what he is like when he is walking through the fire with you because he is no matter what you're going through Jesus is with you I want to read to you out of Isaiah this is Isaiah chapter 41 verses 9 through 10 I took you from the ends of the earth from its farthest corners I called you I said you are my servant you, I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. It says, I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners, I called you. God called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I have chosen you and not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. God is saying he is with you right now in your room, on your walk, in your run, wherever you're listening. God is with you. God is with you. He can never go away from you. It's a promise of God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. First of all, God is saying I took you from the ends of the earth. You know, God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. And the Bible says that he would leave the 99 to go find the one. In Matthew 18, 12, God talks about how he leaves the 99 to come get the one. Are you the one that needs rescuing today? Are you the one that needs God's love and strength today? In your biggest weakness, in your biggest moment of grief, are you the one that God needs to say, I took you from the ends of the earth, right? Wherever you are, God can rescue you from that. From its farthest corners, I called you. There's something to be said about being called by God. I know for me, when God calls me, and I feel called by the Lord. I feel purpose. No matter what I'm doing in life, no matter no matter whether I'm successful or not, God called me and that's success to me. That God has called you and me. You are successful already. There is nothing that we need to do in order to earn God's grace. We cannot earn our salvation by good works. We cannot earn it by doing good. I was struggling this week because I was 
doing some bad stuff just to be honest with you there's there's things in my life right now that i can't really talk about but there is really there's a lot of hardship in my in my personal life right now and there's something that i did that i felt really ashamed about and god was just i was feeling so crunchy like so like oh my gosh i just did this bad thing right god doesn't love me like that was the feeling that i had this whole week like because i did this God must not love me. And I got to church today and what I heard was the gospel of Jesus that says nothing I do amounts to salvation. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus saves you and me. When we ask for Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of our hearts, he does the righteousness himself through the cross and his suffering and by his wounds we are healed okay in isaiah 53 verse 4 it says surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by god and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions who who was pierced he jesus Jesus was pierced for your transgressions, for my transgressions. That means when I do bad things, Jesus is Lord. Jesus has saved me because of his affliction and the way he was crushed on the cross gave me a new freedom. The way that he was crushed, we are to have and walk in peace because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. We don't have to worry about whether we are being good or bad that does not matter to the lord yes god truly i think because god is good he wants obedience from us because he knows that that is good for us but he doesn't think badly of us when we are having a bad day and we're and we have sin uh, that that we think is sin right because on the flip side when we think we're doing good when we have a good day we're still sinners. We're still falling short from the glory of God. We still fall short from the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to amount to any of it because Jesus alone bore that shame on the cross. And Jesus alone and through his sacrifice, you and I are seen by God as clean, as righteous because of what he did on the cross, not because of a good day we have. or a, and, and if we have a bad day, it doesn't doesn't mean it deters his love from us he loves us no matter what we do and then as we go on it says but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds we are healed with his wounds we are healed can you imagine that can you imagine jesus at his worst dying on a cross crucified made to suffer for you and me and I think about that often and it makes me feel really sad it makes me feel sort of kind of like I don't want to think about it but I have to think about it because that is what gets me up every day the fact that I don't have to worry about being good or bad oh that gives me peace and that gives me freedom especially in times of extreme pain and grief when you're going through something really hard and it's hard to be nice or it's hard to be good, you know? I want to encourage you to see yourself sober. Not, not thinking that the things that you do qualify your salvation. Or the things that you don't do disqualify your salvation. You are already accepted and loved by Jesus. And he would have left the ends of the earth to come and reach you and call you by your name and tell you that not only is he going to comfort you and be your strength and your extreme weakness, but he's also going to support you. He's going to help you. He's going to guide you and he's going to uphold you with his righteous right hand. And he is powerful and he is faithful and he is trustworthy because we have a track record with God. If you haven't done this, friend, I dare you to think back in your life to maybe even write out what God has done for you. Write down a remembrance of sorts of where do you see God in your past? I hope that you can sit down and have this time of reflection because 
especially in our pain, especially in our suffering, the whole meat of of the lesson is learned by looking back. And you've got to look back and look at the things that you struggle with and maybe ask the Lord to help you correct those, but also look back and see his goodness, see where he met you. Because we forget, we forget how big God is, we forget how faithful God is, and the enemy wants to just completely blind us to the goodness of God, especially when we're low and when we're having a hard time. And that brings us to this cycle of I'm in shame, I'm in distress, I want to distract, then because I distract, then I feel so guilty because I just did this and this and this, and that's sinning and it brought me, you know, more away from God. You're never away from God. You can't be away from God. God never leaves you. God never leaves you. You might have turned the other way and maybe feel ashamed of your behavior, but you can quickly, quickly turn to his heart and say, Jesus, please forgive me. And the answer will always be, yes, I will forgive you. Jesus' answer will always be, yes, I love you and I forgive you. There's never going to be a time where you come to him and your hands are dirty and you say, Daddy, I'm sorry, I messed up again. Never going to be a time where he would tell you, get out of here. I can't believe you've done this again. No, he will wash your hands with you. He will tell you of how lovely you are. He will show you and shower you with his compassion and his love. I hope that today you believe, even at your worst, even at your lowest, that God can be your strength. You can get God's strength by abiding in him every day. You can get God's strength when you are weak by opening the word of God and reading the Bible, Googling. There's so many, you can Google so many things. You can Google verses for when I'm feeling low, verses for for God's strength, verses to help me not feel depressed or anxious. The word of God heals our mind and soul. Speak that over your life. You will feel like a different person. And sit down and journal. Journal what you're feeling. That will, in and of itself, help you reconsider what you are feeling and thinking and reconsider how you want to show up for yourself, even through this difficult time. The difficulties that we go through, they inevitably create a character in us that we will be able to withstand the weight of God's glory in the end. We are not made for this earth. We're made for heaven. And God is preparing for us for eternity, eternity with him. So think of that as a saving grace of I am in it here in the world to know God as much as I can know him. And some of the best times I have ever been able to know Jesus have been through hardships because I press more into him. I I sit with him more often. I'm on my hands and knees praying, worshiping God, worshiping when I feel depressed or downcast. I'm going to pray for us. I really pray this podcast supported your mental health today, your your well-being, your spirit, and that it encouraged you to be the best version of yourself today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. I thank, thank you for the ways that you hold us and strengthen us. I pray that you cast out any depression in us right now, God. I pray that you cast out any unclean spirits that are waging war on our minds and our behalf. God, and I pray for your spirit, your love, your goodness to be with us and through us do things that we could have never imagined. Lord, I know that you love to work, especially when we're broken vessels, because people can see through our brokenness and see you. Lord God, may these broken hearts and spirits be renewed by your love, and let the perfect love of Christ just feel like a loving balm on our hurting hearts. Help us to see and hear you in a way that we have never heard you before. Help us to know how to pray, Lord, when we are weak and we can't pray, Lord, I pray, God, that you would enable us to do the impossible, which is to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, God. Sometimes it's hard to love ourselves, so Lord, help us with that today. Help us to love self and have compassion to for ourselves, Lord. I know for me, sometimes it's hard to have compassion on me, and then it's hard for me to have compassion towards others, God. You have saved us, you alone, and through your righteousness, we are seen as perfect in God's eyes. 
because of what you have done on the cross. Help us to see that clearly and soberly and help us to never think for one second that it is our good behavior that earns us any kind of salvation, Lord, but help us to feel complete freedom over feeling pharisaical and feeling like there is law to be had when it's all grace. It's your grace, Jesus. It's your mercy. It's you that died on the cross. And because of your wounds, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me this episode. I am so grateful to be back. I love you to pieces and I really do pray that this podcast transform the way that you think about your weakness with Jesus. Just as a reminder, you can text the show with your phone if you want to do a little text of maybe you want to comment on how God is moving in your heart through this podcast. I would love to hear from you. Send it to a friend who might need some encouragement today. I love you so much. Welcome back to The Courage Within and I'll see you, God willing, next week. Adios!